Well, again, if you're talking about access, and if we think about of uh, 100 years ago where universities had not been open for women, nowadays, of course, this is not a problem. I just mentioned the numbers. Over 50% of the starting students are female, so it's not a problem of access. The question then comes about development. And do they have the change, same chances as for development as men? No, not really. And this is actually due to an, uh, a number of reasons which you could summarize as self-discrimination, unconscious or implicit biases, and then covert discrimination. So let me just uh, uh, um, explain that a little bit. Self-discrimination uh, starts in particular at, you know, when, when there's a decision from the postdoctoral level then to start really as, as, as a group leader. So as I said, 50% uh, of the postdocs in the biosciences are female. If you then go to starting group leaders, it's 25%. And that is not because necessarily women are not being employed, but it's because women are not applying. That is, they have selectively they have selectively uh, gone out of the career. They have decided that this is not for them. And it's not that you would find them in industry or anywhere else, actually, in, in that, on, that, on that level. They're just gone. Um, then the other things I always talked about, unconscious uh, or, or implicit bias. So an implicit bias is, uh, is a bias that you hold within yourself, uh, but you're not conscious of this bias. So both men and women, there's, there's actually tests that you can do to actually check your own biases on this. Um, it shows that both men and women, almost equally, have a hard time associating female or women with the leadership position, with competency. Actually, there's recently been an experiment published in PNAS by uh, American researchers where they've actually sent an application uh, for a position at the university to uh, group leaders at, at uh, research intense universities in the United States. And the only difference between the two applications was actually the name, the female name. Jennifer and male named John. And actually both female and male group leaders on average saw the male applicant with a male name with the same qualifications as more competent, more hireable, and they were actually willing to pay him much more, $4,000 more per year than hiring him. So that is to the question about implicit bias and what it is in a name. So um, that is something that, that actually then happens. Development in, in science and anywhere else in society, actually. Yeah.